Hello and welcome back. In this one, we're going to be taking a, a little bit of a break from the dungeon and uh, instead I'm going to start work on a bunch of cave tiles. So, something like this. And if I just pause the video for a second, uh, you can see that I've not used an outer wall on these as I, uh, I'm not entirely sure that they're all that necessary for caves. So instead, I'll, uh, I'll be varying the height of the floor in a few places, like you can see in the upper left. Um, just to give the tiles more of a natural or uneven appearance. So, uh, now that's out of the way, let's get started. Okay, so, uh, one of the things you might have noticed with these is that I've, uh, I've provided both a plain and a gridded version of the texture, like you can see here, uh, to accommodate both styles of play. However, I'll be using the gridded versions in this video, as, uh, as that's my own preference. Right then, so uh, to start things off, you'll need to print out one of the floor textures. And uh, after doing that, uh, I like to trim off some of the excess paper, um, just like you can see here. And unlike the dungeon tiles, uh, this time we'll be gluing this down to some single corrugated cardboard. And here I am doing just that uh, with the trusty glue stick as normal. There we go. So, once that's been given a few minutes to dry, um, all we need to do next is cut it out with a sharp knife. And, as always, try to be careful while doing this. Next, we'll need to decide what type of shape this tile's going to be. So, uh, for this one, I'm going to go for a wide passage that has a, a 2 inch wide exit here, and a similar one here. And to do this, I'm just going to take the same knife and simply cut a wavy line to form the desired shape. Though, uh, as you can see, it, uh, it might take several passes to cut all the way through. So I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and do the same to the other side, um, being very careful not to slip with the knife. And uh, if all goes according to plan, uh, we should end up with something that looks like this. Now, you can of course leave it like that uh, if you're happy with how it looks but uh, I like to take a pair of scissors and then cut out little sections here and there um, just to add a bit more variance to the overall shape. Essentially, uh, all I'm trying to do is have it so that the edges have some curved parts, some straight parts, uh, the occasional sharp point, and so on, uh, if that makes any sense. Basically, something like this. So, we are going to create a fair amount of waste when cutting these out, but uh, we can use these offcuts to raise the floor in a few areas and make the whole thing a bit more three-dimensional. To do this, I'm just going to lay the offcut in the area I'm attempting to raise up, uh, making sure that I've matched the grid up as best I can, and then draw around the edge of the floor tile so that I can then cut out the same profile on the offcut itself. So eventually, I should end up with something that looks like that. Then it's just a matter of cutting the raised area into the desired shape and I'll, uh, I'll often trim off a little bit at a time um, until I finally get something I'm happy with. And there you have it. Though uh, it is worth mentioning that uh, you can squash the corrugation a little when using scissors so uh, here I am unsquashing it with a, with a barbecue skewer. Okay, so uh, once all that's done, all that's left to do is glue the piece in place. So, something like that. Now, I'm going to do exactly the same thing with another offcut. Um, so, I've speeded this section up quite a lot. Um, but this time, the aim is to make a similar but smaller piece that's going to sit on top of the last one. And once again, I'll just keep nibbling at the shape, bit by bit, until I get something I'm happy with. Then, when finished, it's glued on top of the last one. And with any luck, you can now see the kind of thing we're aiming for. Okay, so uh, I've gone ahead and cut out several more of these pieces off camera, as, uh, as I'm sure you don't need to see me do that over and over again. And, uh, and here I am just gluing them all in place. And as you can hopefully see, uh, the idea behind this particular tile, it was just that of a, of a wide passage with an area of difficult terrain near the centre. So as far as your basic cave tiles go, that's all there is to it. 
However, we're not quite done yet, and uh, as you may have noticed, I've also included some water textures in the PDF. And here they are. And just like before, I'll be using the version with the grid, though uh, you can of course use whichever one you prefer. Okay then, so uh, I'm going to be using this texture to create a few pools within the cave. So uh, with that in mind, here's a cave tile that I made earlier, and uh, as you can see, this time I've also cut out a pool sized hole in the centre. And it's a good idea to keep this piece that you've cut out, as, uh, as we can then use that as a rough template for the next stage. So uh, here I am just matching the grid of the cutout with the grid of the water, and, uh, and then marking out an area that's slightly larger. So, something like that. Then we can just quickly cut the whole thing out, and, uh, and then just double check to make sure it's in the right position. Then it's just a matter of applying some glue around the underside of the pool, and, uh, and also along the very edge of the water texture itself. And then once we're happy that everything's in place, and, uh, and both grids are lining up nicely, uh, just stick the two pieces together. It, uh, it really is as easy as that. So all that's left to do now is to repeat the process and make a bunch of different shaped passages and chambers and so on, uh, like the ones you can see on the screen right now. And with half a dozen or so printouts and maybe an evening's work, you should be able to put together a nice little set. But uh, we're still not done with this video yet and uh, the last thing we're going to take a look at is a simple wooden door. And these are made in pretty much the same way as the dungeon doors, but uh, I'll quickly run through it again as a little reminder, uh, or for those of you that might be new to the channel. So the first thing I'm going to do is roughly cut out all three pieces, uh, leaving a slight border around the edges. Then I'll glue the base texture to some thin cardboard, uh, like so, and, uh, and then glue one side of the door to the, uh, the same single corrugated cardboard that we used for the tiles. Then, while those are drying, I'll, uh, I'll trim the other side of the door exactly to size. And once I've given everything a few minutes to dry, I'll, uh, I'll first cut out the base, and then the door itself. There we go. Then all I need to do is glue the other side of the door to the back of the cardboard, uh, making sure it's the right way up. And then hot glue the bottom of the door to the centre of the base. So something like that. And uh, on that note, I think it's time to bring this one to a close. So uh, as always, I'll, uh, I'll leave you with a picture of the tiles in action. And uh, as you can see, they, uh, they're probably not as nice as proper handcrafted terrain, but uh, the fact that you can churn out an entire set in an evening or two kind of makes up for that. Uh, or at least I hope it does. So all that's left to say is thank you very much for watching. Uh, there's still lots more to come, but uh, as I say, that's it for this one. So see you next time.